Hi, this is Tech with Costa, and I'm sharing my engineering journey. This video is an introduction to Git and GitHub for beginners. In the following videos, I'm going to show you everything you need to know with practical examples. Now we know how to interact with the Linux terminal. This is a practical course, so you have to code to build projects. Somehow, we have to store that code. And as a best practice, let's store all projects in the same place. Let me create a subfolder on Linux inside the user's home folder. This provides easy access to everything we develop. So create a folder and call it git or project or code. I will call mine git, so mkdir git ls, and this is a standard folder. This folder will store code repositories locally. A code repository or repo is like a digital container where you store and manage your code files. You already know that the official course repo is stored on GitHub. We can clone this repo to our local machine to have easy access to all files while attending the course. For that, we will use Git and GitHub. Git is a version control system that helps you manage different versions of your code while you're developing projects. It tracks changes, allowing you to organize your work and keep a record of modifications. It's like a tool to document your code journey. GitHub is a platform where Git users collaborate. It's like a hub where you can host, share, and manage your code files on the web. When you use GitHub, you are working with Git behind the scenes. Git is the engine, and GitHub is the place where you park your code. Normally, Ubuntu has Git installed by default. Let's check if it is actually installed by typing which git. The which command in Linux is used to locate the executable file associated with a given command. So we see that is in fact installed in this path. Let's run git. So we can see all the information about this command, including options we can use. Now let's run git dash dash version and we are running 2.34.1. Git could also be installed on our Windows machine. But since we will work mostly on Ubuntu through WSL, we'll use Git directly from it. If Git is not installed in your machine, normally it involves running sudo apt update and then sudo apt install git. Now let's go to the official course repo on GitHub. And at the moment I'm not logged in. If we click on code, we can see two options to clone the repo. The first one is HTTPS and we can see this link. The other one GitHub CLI and we have this command. We can even download a zip file containing all the files. And if we open the zip file, we have all the files here. However, these options are not the safest way of cloning repos, nor convenient, especially this last one. Before anything else, let's create a GitHub account. This one is just temporary to show you the process. Let's click on sign up, enter your email, your password and a username. Let's verify this, submit, create account, copy the code, paste it, skip personalization. We have a new GitHub account. Let's go here, your profile, and we do not have repositories yet. If we go back to the course repo, there is a new option to clone called SSH. This is the one I want to use and it's similar to HTTPS. Click here on which remote URL should I use. You can read through to understand the differences. The HTTPS section and the SSH section. Let's click on connecting to GitHub with SSH. And these are the steps we are going to follow. Whenever you have questions about topics or concepts in general, you can go to Microsoft Copilot or ChatGPT and ask it. For example, let's go to copilot.microsoft.com. Let's ask the following. Explain the difference between cloning a repository using HTTPS versus SSH from GitHub. This AI model is able to summarize almost everything for you based on internet knowledge. Now we have a bunch of information about HTTPS and also about SSH. Now summarize into a concise and short answer for a beginner in case the previous answer is too complex. And in summary, SSH is more secure. It's great for security and ease of use. We are going with this option. When using these AI models, be cautious and validate the outputs. Use it as your learning buddy. Now let's go back, code, SSH, and we see that we don't have any public SSH keys in our GitHub account. In the next video, we will set up SSH for GitHub workflows, and I hope to see you there.